circular thing, right? Yeah, you move from one to K and don't take the previous color. And you can take any of the K color which is not uh, there in the previous state, right? You are yeah. talking about the previous. But what about when we roll around? It's a circular, yeah, so right? I want to say, because when you reach six now. So you have a previous color and that variable x which I told you which is assigned to the first one. So it's like you have to avoid two colors of six. I don't get you. I mean, you you are trying to say that you start with every color of one and yeah. try to compute this all dp with like then there will be a parameter associated with the color of one which you have taken. Yes. What would be the complexity? Uh, n into k. N into k. How? I mean, you're going to the next color that takes n step and you're missing k color, k minus one colors for everything. So you are maintaining the state in which you have the color of the first particular element, right? Yeah. And okay. then you are. Yeah, I have a state for another one. As position, previous color, first color. If you want. Position. Previous color, comma first color. Comma first color. Yeah. Okay. And first color will have these k possibilities, right? Uh, yeah. And previous color will also have some K possibilities. I'm, I'm just telling you to look from K color. When you reach 6 or N minus 1, you just see what color you are placing should not be equal to the previous color as well as the first color. Yeah, that's fine. So you are trying to calculate something like if it has been a linear array. Yeah. So you are trying to calculate this number of ways to color this. This yeah. circular property is not there. How do you handle the circular case? Yeah. Then you will have to calculate something like how many ways are there if the first color is A, I end up with A only. Those possibilities you will have to reject, right? Yes. If you do it for one color, it's for one Consider circular permutations the same. I mean, it's not labeled, right? Sorry. We are supposed to consider circular permutations of that. No, we are not supposed to. Uh, uh, no, as same. We are not supposed to overcome that. Yeah, right. we we are not supposed to overcome it. But like, mm -hmm. if one is like one, two, three, four, five, six, and if you rotate it, then it's even if then it's the same. Then also uh, we'll consider it as a different case. Okay. The return condition will be previous color not equal to first color. The base condition. That's fine. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's fine then. Yeah, what were you saying? No, the question is not clear. Like, let's say 1, 2, 3 is a color. It's 2, 3, 1 considered the same. No, it's not considered the same. Like, if it's yellow, yellow, yellow. I mean, yellow, blue, yellow, and you rotate it, then it's a different one. Maybe yellow, blue, yellow, and then blue, yellow, yellow, it's different. it's different. Yeah. So, what he suggested is a possible solution, but of a greater comp complexity. Now, suppose uh, the solution which I am going to tell right now is works for n greater than or equal to 3. Sorry, n greater than 3. So, let's assume let's consider any three consecutive sectors consider the middle, middle sector 2 and one, 1 and 3 so there are two cases either 1 and 3 gets the same color or 1, three, one and 3 gets the different color three consecutive sectors if 1 and 3 have the same color then note that there will be only k minus 1 possibilities for 2 I mean, whatever color 1 and 3 occupies, we can give uh, any color except that. So let's color 3 with that color. There will be k minus 1 possibilities. And after that, we can merge all these through. Since I am talking about n greater than 3, 1 and 3 are not adjacent. So we can consider it as if it were it were a single sector 
of color 1 so we will end up having a smaller problem in which we reduce the problem by 2 and we fix some color here we calculate the number of ways of this and this fixed color won't matter because in any valid coloring whatever color is fixed there in in all the coloring there will be some color which will be fixed we will color 1 and 3 with that color and we will again have p minus 1 possibility k minus 1 possibilities for the second one so this mer merging is feasible always so for the first case fn is equal to fk minus 1 into fn minus 2 Sorry? K minus 2, Fn minus 1. K minus 2? Yeah, so I'll explain this other part. If these two are of different colors, then there are K minus 2 possibi possibilities to color this uh, second sector. Because it can't have the color of 1, it can't have achieved the color of 3. So there are k minus 2 possibilities. Since in this case we are already considering that 1 and 3 are having a different color, we can just forget this two vertices which we have already colored and reduce the problem into n minus 1. Now in this particular smaller problem there will be this 1 and 3. We have merged two but any valid coloring of this will give 1 and 3 a different color whatever color we get again we will be left with we will be left with k minus 2 possibilities so this merging is again feasible thus this fn can be calculated via this formula which could be easily evaluated thank you so yeah we will come to the proof for dn uh, number of derangements yeah now uh, we have some numbers from 1 to n yeah. and let's call each portion as like same number 1 to n okay okay a same number same number to it okay so let's say f of initial f of i is equal to i okay now you want experimentation such that uh, we get f of i not equal to i for all i okay right so like uh, total number of permutations will be n factorial and the number of permutations where uh, at least one number we have f of i equal to i that will be n minus 1 factorial and we have n possibilities, so we multiply by n in, in C1. Wait, wait, one second. n factorial, okay, total number of permutations, yeah. then? Now, uh, the number of permutations where uh, we have f of i equal to i okay. is n minus 1 factorial. At least one i such that f of i equal to i. Fixing one uh, portion to be i. Okay. So we have remaining n minus 1 places. That permutation is n minus 1 factorial. And okay. I vary from 1 to n. Okay. So we have n minus 1 factorial. Okay. That we that n factorial is subtracted. Now we have to add those places where like uh, we have two places fixed. Okay. That will be n c two into n minus two factorial. Okay. That we add it, and then we subtract those which we shall have three, and like it goes automatically. So we get n factorial minus n factorial plus uh, n minus one fact n factorial by two factorial plus n factorial by 3 factorial and so on. So like basically it ends up like n factorial into 1 minus 1 by 1 factorial plus 1 by 2 factorial minus 1 by 3 factorial and so on. Yeah. Okay, the proof is correct, the proof given by him. Uh, I, I will give a... Okay, I will prove it by using combinatrix. So, let dn be the number of derangements that is number of derangements of n numbers so consider the array one of size n one should not be at its correct version so you have n minus 1 charges for putting one so dn equal to some n minus 1 charges for putting one so assume you are going to put one in position k so there are two conditions now either k comes to position 1 or k goes to some other position if k goes to position 1 it is equal to d n minus 2 because you have 
set right 1 and k and you have n minus 2 more numbers to set right so it will be d n minus 2 if k comes to 1 if k doesn't comes come to 1 then the problem is same as you can basically replace k by 1 because the condition is k should not come to 1 for that if you replace k by 1 you have the condition that 1 should not come to 1 and every other position should not come to the same position so it reduces to the same derangement problem of size I will repeat it again so dn is the number of derangements of size n so one should certainly not come to its position so assume you put one at some other position k so the charges for k are n minus 1 so it will be n minus 1 into some function so the function is if uh, the function will be determined by k will have two k that is the number since one goes to k k will have two cases either it goes to one or it goes to some other place note that k can never go to k because one has already gone to k so if k goes to one then that means that in this position there is one and in this position there is k and so you have to solve the derangement problem of uh, derangement for a problem of size n minus 2 so it is d n minus 2 and if k doesn't go to 1 then it is similar to you have the condition is same as 1 not going to 1 I mean the condition is not affected for every other element other than 1 and k the condition remains the same so for those n minus 2 elements the condition is still the same so the only extra condition we have is k should not go to 1 but k doesn't have any significance here so we can instead have replace k by 1 so that we have the condition 1 doesn't go to 1 and it reduces to a problem of size n minus 1 so once you get the recurrence you can solve it like dn minus n times dn minus 1 equal to uh, minus of dn minus 1 minus n minus 1 times dn minus 2 this this putting uh, taking the n times dn minus 1 that side you will get this so let some fn equal to dn minus n times dn minus 1 so fn is minus fn minus 1 uh, with the base cases uh, d1 is equal to 0 d2 equal to 1 base cases so with that you get that f uh, f2 is d2 minus twice d1 which is equal to 1 so f2 is 1 so you can basically say fn is minus 1 power n so uh, fn is dn minus n times dn minus 1 so dn equal to n times dn minus 1 plus minus 1 power n uh, now divide this equation by n factorial you get dn by n factorial equal to dn minus 1 by n minus 1 factorial plus minus 1 power n by n minus 1 factorial n factorial now put gn is dn by n factorial you get gn is uh, gn minus 1 plus minus 1 power n so calculating the uh, base values of I mean so gn will be equal to uh, gn is gn minus 1 plus minus 1 power n by n factorial so uh, gn will be equal to minus 1 power I mean just extending it minus 1 by uh, minus 1 power 0 by 0 factorial plus minus 1 power 1 by 1 factorial plus so on up till minus 1 power n by n factorial so gn is dn by n factorial so dn will be equal to n factorial times this quantity this is what he gets okay sure.